When you believe things that you read online, KPIs are the most simplest thing in the world. So you have all this content that is claiming these are the best KPIs for e-commerce, these are the best KPIs for software as a service. Just define your KPIs. And to be true, KPIs or metrics, which in the end are the ingredients to create KPIs, are one of the most complex things that I know. Why are they so complex? Mostly because just because you define a KPI doesn't mean that you really have an idea what you should do with that. So I know a lot of occasions where people picked proper KPIs for their business model, but then we're basically looking at that and the big question that come up is what should we do with that? And the what is the difficult question here. There's one solution and I want to show this solution in this video which is called a metric tree or a metric graph. This concept helps to go from a KPI to your next actions, to understand what has caused a shift in a KPI and then to plan actions to improve it. In this video I show you what metric in this video we will have a look into metric trees how to build them, how they are useful, and what they can unlock for your business analysis and for your business intelligence. So let's have a look. This video is sponsored by Mixpanel. Mixpanel has a new way to do product analytics with your warehouse data. You can connect Mixpanel to your data warehouse and then you can run all the product analytics investigations on all the product analytics deep dives on top of your data warehouse data with clean, prepared and high quality data. Check out the link in the description to learn more about the offering. I'm using it and I'm extremely happy to have this new kind of setup for product analytics because it unlocks so many more use cases on top of much better data than before. Maybe you saw the things when you're googling for it. Here are the essential 20 metrics that every product manager should know. Hey, here are the best metrics for software as a service. And to be fair, as an inspiration, these kind of posts are definitely not bad. So at least you get some kind of idea what you can track. And I still use them and look at them to see does someone has an interesting take on a specific kind of metric that I haven't thought about it. And I definitely recommend to read all the different kind of metrics posts that come around, but do it with the grain of salt because there's one problem with these kind of metrics collections. It's isolated. It's 20 metrics that end up on a dashboard and everyone is looking on them and saying, okay, I get this. The conversions are important for us. Or let's say MRR is important for us. It has changed. MRR is important for our business. And what we can see is it hasn't been growing like we wanted it to grow. What does that mean? Why is it like this? Where did we fail? It's never an answer that someone comes around and sends an email to all the team. We need to increase MRR people. I want to have the MRR increase until next month. This doesn't work like this. So even when someone is claiming this in the meeting, everyone would go out of this meeting would say, yeah, I don't really have an idea how we should increase the MRR. Because one problem is MRR is an output metric. So it's basically an output of all the things that you do before ends up with more monthly recurring revenue. But you cannot directly influence it. This would be a magic pill, but they don't exist. There are other things that drive the MRR that you can influence. But the big question is, which ones are these? And this is the big problem of metric collections. So you have a metric collection where you have total MRR, where you have new MRR, where you have MRR churned, MRR expanded. So all the classic kind of things. But if you just put them next to each other on a dashboard, they don't really tell you anything about your business how the business works in general. They tell you something about the output of your business, but they don't really tell you how the business operates within these metrics. There is an essential ingredient missing, and these are the relations. Metrics between each other have relationships. For example, you have 
total MRR, and then you have new MRR, contracted MRR, retained MRR, expanded MRR, churned MRR, resurrected MRR, and the sum of all these metrics construct the total MRRs. They basically give you a glimpse into why your total MRR is changing over time. For example, you can see, hey, we don't really get a lot of new MRRs in there. So this is definitely, this has been down over the last three months. Or you can see our churn, churn MRR has gone up pretty significantly. This creates a relation between the total MRR and the other metrics. And this helps you to operate. And in the end, it's the concept of a metric tree. Let's have a look how this can look like. In a the idea is like, look, metrics, trees, again, just one abstraction, right? Graphs, spreadsheets, whatever. It's a growth model at the end of the day. But the idea is that if you think of it as a tree, then the leaves of that tree are the what's happening. The why did it happen is looking down the tree. The what's mm -hmm. going to happen is looking up the tree. The what should we do next is looking at the branches. So let's take an example of MRR, total MRR in this case. So total MRR in this tree is being decomposed into new customers and ASB. New customers is being decomposed into leads times win rate. Just make quickly ASP. So what is ASP? average selling price. I got some new customers. I sold it at a certain value, right? And it comes out to the MRR. You can call this average MRR to be maybe more accurate here. Yeah. Leads times win rate is new customers. It is true. We call these component relationships. It's mm -hmm. true by construction. It's true as a formula. It's true by definition. Leads times win rate will always equal new customers. And so that's the first kind of metric relationship that we have in this tree. We have this notion of these component relationships. The second type of relationship we have is an influence relationship. So speed to lead over here, speed to lead in a B2B context is one of these kind of named metrics that <laughs> refers typically to, hey, I have an inbound lead or I had someone that just became a product qualified lead or a marketing qualified lead. Uh, how quickly did I connect with them? How quickly did I pick up the phone and call them? How quickly did I email them to text them? How quickly did I engage them? And of course, the notion is that speed to lead is usually positively correlated by a positive driver for win rate. The faster I connect with someone, the more likely I am to win them. But it isn't true by formula. It isn't true by definition, right? It is true empirically. It is true in a kind of a temporally contingent way. It might be very strong today. It might be a weaker relationship tomorrow. It's a probabilistic relationship, right? So the other kind of relationship that we see here that matters are these influence relationships. As you can see here, this is a very simple metric tree, but it already shows how we can operate with it. We break down the metric, let's say the total MRR, into different kind of layers. The deeper the layers go, the more impact we have on the metrics on lower levels of the metric tree. And this is the essential thing. We have to find the metric where it's pretty easy for the team to identify where can they improve things. So for example, if we end up at some point into generating more leads because we know from our metric tree that in the end a lead can become a subscriber and the subscriber of course gets us new MRR. When we identify this we can go to the marketing team and can talk with the marketing team about okay what can we do to increase new leads and how can we analyze it. Are there really like maybe good segments uh, in your leads currently that have a lot of potential uh, for the future when we increase them? This makes our whole setup operational. It enables us to break down one metric into, I don't know, 30, 40 metrics that are dependent on each other and then pick the metrics down a branch that represent the work of a specific kind of team. Product, we pick something that, when we break it down, that we know when we get more people into a first value experience, that we know when people experience more value, that in the end they are more likely to convert into subscribers. And this, again, increases the MRR. So we can build out this path as well. And just to give you an example, so Arby explains here, how a full extended metric tree can look like for a business that in the end connects down to different kind of teams and their daily work.
you start here, if you start with a simple metric total MRR, that is this kind of one of these core pulse metrics of the company, right? One of these right. you know, key financial indicators. But if you actually start decomposing the tree, and it, by the way, if you actually want to start understanding what is going on with MRR, the tree gets pretty deep. And so now if we follow the branches, if we follow it to new MRR, we can go over to this canvas here. And actually this canvas is only decomposing new MR. So what no. do we see here? Okay. New MR is being decomposed into new customers and new MR, average new MR. But then you end up with this whole constellation. If you are a B2B SaaS, if you're a B2B SaaS company, you have this enterprise new business funnel, this kind of classic funnel of, I have a lead that becomes qualified and becomes an opportunity and then becomes closed, et cetera. If you have a trial motion, you have your kind of own trial flow. And in either of those cases, you have acquisition. And you're talking about these zones and parts of uh, the teams that might see themselves. Organic, a team that owns the organic website performance. They have their own pocket of the tree, their own limb of the tree, their own branch. Ad source signups, referral signups, email source signups. And ultimately, a couple things to take away from this, right? One is we started with a question, total MRR. We then went over to one of the components of that uh, MRR bridge, new MRR, and we decompose our way down and look at how hairy we can already get, right? So to really fully understand the picture of new MRR, there's actually a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of mechanics. There's a lot of components. There's a lot of influences and there's a lot of dynamism here. Number two, that different teams can see themselves in different aspects of those three different branches. And number three, and this is related, it's basically the flip side of number two, but it's a really powerful point. The tree and these relationships are how a single team can draw a through line between the work that it does and the key outputs of the company, right? And right. I think there's a lot of folks in Timo's audience, specifically in the product world, mixed panel, of course, is oriented towards product users. One of the things that product teams struggle with is I released a feature or I moved a certain metric, what actually pops out the other side? Uh, yeah. So that I can justify my promotion, I can prioritize features, et cetera. And to me, the, the only way to do that, the best way to do that is to actually have this full web of relationships. And for product teams, especially, I think the value is if you actually have this full constellation, if you actually can decompose the company's key output metrics into this full constellation of inputs, you can now hang your initiatives against the tree. You can now find satellite metrics, right? Far exactly. flung leaf metrics on high hanging branches that you can now target with initiatives or product initiatives. And it's much easier to reason about if I do this and I pull this chain, this is what I get out the other side. As you can see here, we're now leaving the simple version of a tree and we end up with a graph or a map or however we want to call it. But the most important thing is we are now able to look at this map or this graph and we can point to specific areas here and can say, okay, today we discuss with the marketing team. So we discuss locally how we have improved all the things. So we look how, let's say, they, they run different kind of campaigns to improve the leads that come in. And we can analyze the cost per leads that they have generated so far. So we can analyze this locally and then we can look at it globally on the impact for the MRRs and customer lifetime value to see if the things that marketing has done in the last, I don't know, six, 12 weeks has improved our business goal. And this creates this connection that always is missing when you just take isolated metrics. Because in the end, you want to bring everything down, what you do, to product and business success. And even small initiatives that maybe like growth team is running, in the end, you want to see which kind of impact these can have on the work of the growth team. But in total, of course, like you want to see if they can influence the major business output metrics. And a metric tree gives us this kind of framework where we can sit down in a meeting with 10 people from different kind of teams and we can look on the big picture and we can see, okay, we are missing our targets that we had. And now let's break it down in different kind of areas. Where can we see which area is contributed most to the situation that we missed it? And there it's not about blaming something. So it's more like identifying marketing did a really good job to generate more people that sign up. But now we have identified that our conversion rate from these people to a subscription is going down. And now we can even work on this kind of area. We identified the area where the problem is. 
And now we can identify what is causing the problem. It could be like that marketing is now targeting different kind of segments. And these segments maybe need a different kind of approach to start out with our software. And this enables, for example, now the growth team to say, okay, we have a good baseline here, but now we can run some experiments with this new kind of segments that came in. And we can see if we improve these segments to convert as well. Because then the impact that marketing already created is now pushed down the tree to the output metric of total MRR. And this makes it so powerful. Avi has a good take as like how this format especially helps in meetings. The most powerful piece are the most powerful pieces of a data-driven culture are business reviews and planning. And the, in business reviews, and I know we have about 60 seconds left, but in business reviews, what that looks like is that I go to a business review and the what is happening and the why is it happening question are at my fingertips. It's not a, it is offline, let's take it offline. It never comes back online, right? That's how these things tend to go. It is that we all see reality the same way. We can troubleshoot reality likely in real time or before even the meeting. And we have a very clear sense of what is wrong and people can go target. On the planning side, it looks like opportunity sizing, bottom-up opportunity sizing is a is truly democratized um, that everyone and every org can understand um, if I did this initiative to toggle this metric by this amount, uh, this is what I'll get out the other side. And executive leadership, you can now look at that and see where you want to allocate capital based on what all the initiatives are that people are proposing. And it becomes a planning process quarterly, annual, and monthly, that is less subjective, that it happens faster, that people have more confidence around, and that gives people predictability in, the, in their own work. Yeah, it can be very powerful, and it doesn't have to be that difficult. This whole approach has a lot of interesting ways how you can change the way how you work with data. But the best thing, and it, like the immediate thing, is it improves the meetings that you have with data. Let me recap it. Starting out with metric lists, is definitely not a bad thing. Do it for inspiration. Do it for understanding how you can measure specific things in your business model. The next step, the essential thing is like to bring these metrics into relation that it represents your business model. You need to define a metric tree for your business to make metrics operational. So this is your next step. Once you have the metric tree ready, of course, you have to provide the data. So this is the interesting part, which I will cover in the next video, is how to get from metrics defined to get the data for it. So define events and then track the events and then get the data to calculate the metrics. And then in the end, use this data to improve your planning and review meetings as a first step. So take everyone, look at the big tree, brick map, however you want to call it. Check locally how the team has developed things. Check on the big picture and use this to always do the same thing. Go on the big picture, see, okay, how does our output metrics develop over time? And then go deep in the kind of area where you see this is holding us back. So marketing has improved, but it doesn't really reach the total output number. Where's, where it's getting stuck. So where is the problem? Where can we improve next? And I can tell you, finding improvements within a metric tree is significantly easier than just looking at a random metric assembled dashboard. I hope this motivates you to invest into defining your first metric tree. It's a design task, so don't expect that you sit down for an hour and have the perfect metric tree. Use the SOMA framework as the first inspiration. Take a lot of things from there because this is really stuff that Arby has practicing over years. And so it's super solid. But you can refine it a little bit to your business and then use the metric tree in the different kind of meetings and you will see it's a little bit like magic. So I hope you have fun. Let me know if you have any kind of questions in the comments. Make sure that you subscribe. There's a lot more coming now about metric trees and also what kind of event data you have to generate to get to the metric tree. And so I have a whole series planned out over the next six weeks where I will showcase the whole journey from collecting the data from different kind of places until building up a metric tree that can support us. So 
Make sure you subscribe and if you have any kind of questions, put them in the comment.